Shh. All right, uh, upper extremities. So here's a list of upper extremities on the list of the ART specs. We will go through those. Wow, I said specs pretty uh, significantly there. Sorry, got a little carried away. Um, anyways, fingers, thumb, hand. Do me a favor. I know you do fingers, thumbs, hands all the time, but go, go back through your textbook. Look at central rays, obliquity. Um, remember, for laterals, the lateral, the preferred lateral uh, would be different for second finger, right? This one is going down, the rest will be going um, the other way. So you're going lateral medial, or is that medial lateral? And we're going back to anatomical position. Thumb, remember for us, for clinical, we do a full hand instead of um, the oblique thumb by itself. Textbook separates it out. So again, please go Brush the dust off your textbook and go particular central rays for that. Um, the, so the oblique thumb is the PA hand position. And then it's preferred AP, but when would you do a PA thumb? Trauma, uh, geriatric, something like that. And then hand, um, watch out for that ball catchers question. It's a Norgard view for rheumatoid arthritis, that's this one down here. That is um, both hands sort of in, um, like they're gonna catch a ball, all right? So that's for rheumatoid arthritis, make sure you know that one. Wrist, there's my little face here, there I am. Um, PA, oblique is 45, lateral, what do you wanna see on the lateral? You wanna see superimposed, radius and ulna. Um, when would you use a AP wrist? When would you ever do wrist AP instead of PA? Trauma, geriatric, what would be the benefit of doing an AP wrist? Well, it would reduce the OID to the carpal spaces, um, right, because it's a little bit less. We do a loose fist for the PA wrist to also reduce the space. Carpal tunnel, I want you guys to know this. I want you to memorize this anatomy. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Know this one, know it both ways, all right? Um, you might see it as the gainer heart method. That's the carpal tunnel. And then the one that's reversed is the carpal bridge. So if it's going other way, it's the bridge. The PA scaphoid, you're gonna use that ulnar deviation, right? We're looking for the scaphoid bone. It's the one that's most often fractured. Um, you're gonna angle the tube 20 degrees toward the elbow. Just remember the stetcher method angles the part instead of angling the tube. Forearm, what are they gonna ask you about forearm? <sighs> Mainly that you're gonna do an AP and lateral, two views 90 degrees from each other. I, I sort of put forearm and tib for in the same thing. You need both joints, you need an AP and a lateral. Uh, when would you go off protocol? When would you use a PA versus AP? Trauma, geriatric. Elbow, I think elbow is the worst. All right, now. <laughs> Elbow. Some key terms about elbow. Uh, you're going to use uh, the AP is supination. Remember that hands out like you're holding a cup of soup. So supination. How are your um, humeral epicondyles here? Are they parallel to the imaging plate or are they perpendicular? Remember those. The oblique elbows. We use an external oblique as our protocol but you need to also remember the internal oblique. So what does the external oblique show? Can you pick it out of the lineup here? External oblique shows the radial head free of superimposition, right? So that's this one here. The medial oblique, what does this one show? The coronoid process, so this hook here. Lateral, I'm hoping you can pick out AP and just remember AP, the radial head and the tuberosity are superimposed here, unlike the external oblique where they're open. So you should be able to look at the difference between the two. Degree of bend needed for lateral elbow is that 90 degrees. Remember you want same plane, so get the humerus up, same plane. The lateral, they like to ask this question about how, which view demonstrates the olecranon process, and it's the lateral, because in every other one, it's superimposed over something so the lateral is the key here for the lecranon process. And that's your hook or that little beak, right? Right there. Trauma elbows, because that's super fun. 
Um, the partial flexion options, remember, is that sort of rocking chair one where one is the humerus that's parallel and then they rock down and it's the forearm that's parallel. Make sure you go back through those coil method ones with the tube angles. One has um, different flexions than the other and the tube angle is um, a little bit different for each. Then the trauma views as well, which one shows the radial head, which one shows the coronoid. I don't think you're going to have a ton on that, so I wouldn't spend a ton of time. But make sure you know what those terms are, so you think coil method, trauma elbow is going to be um, is going to be sort of a buzzword for you. If it says partial flexion, I'm hoping you're going to sort of pick that up. The fat pad sign, just a reminder that that's showing some elbow trauma there.